amazing. So, hi everyone and welcome. I'm really glad to be here at Madfest. Um, just to clarify, I am actually not Mark, I'm Lucy. So, um, I'm the Senior Events Manager here at Attest. I'm not usually the one on a stage, but today I am, so let's hope for the best. Uh, so, th for those who don't know, uh, Attest is a consumer research platform and we exist to inform every intuition and dissolve any doubt by making it easy to uncover opportunity with consumer data. And we like to call this continuous insights. So I'm joined here today by one of our fantastic clients, Moneybox, and I'm really excited to chat with Hannah about her, their recent rebrand. Uh, so I'll briefly hand over to Hannah now to introduce herself and tell us a little bit more about Moneybox. Great, thanks Lucy, and hi everybody. Um, I am Hannah, as Lucy said, I lead brand and creative at Moneybox. And for those of, the, of you that don't know, Moneybox is the award-winning app, helping hundreds of thousands of people to achieve their financial goals and ultimately build wealth throughout their lives, whatever their starting point and I'm very excited to be here with you today. Amazing. So Hannah, let's start from the beginning. So Moneybox launched in 2016. It's been on an upwards trajectory. And um, so tell us about the recent rebrand. So where did you start and what were you hoping to achieve? Yeah, so I mean, I think it's been a, you know, an exciting journey over the last five, six years. And I think in particular, it was a, what, quite a rapid journey and we accomplished quite a lot in that time. Yeah. And what kind of happened alongside that is we kind of found ourselves in a position where in a bit of the blink of an eye, we had suddenly gone from quite a straightforward proposition, investing your spare change into a stocks and shares ISA, to suddenly offering quite a complex offering with saving, investing, home buying, retirement services. And alongside that, we were helping our customers achieve much more complex goals and a much broader range of goals. So we kind of realized we were outgrowing our existing brand strategy, brand promise. And so we wanted to step back, think about like, what's the big idea behind Moneybox? What is it we're helping our customers achieve? And what's the promise we want to make to them? Amazing. So once that you knew that you'd like to proceed with a rebrand, I assume that you kind of entered that project with a few unknowns. Yeah. So how did Consumer Insights fit into that project? Yeah, I mean, I would say Consumer Insights kind of played a key role throughout every stage of the project, actually. And to fully summarize this, that in this you know, 10 minute chat would be a bit impossible, but I think I could kind of summarize it into three kind of buckets. So I think at the very beginning of the project, it was really important to us that we you know, make sure that we're factoring in the journey thus far. And obviously we couldn't go back in time and bring a test with us to ask our customers four or five years ago about their experience. But what we could do was actually lean on lots of insight that was available to us in a bit of a proverbial breadcrumb trail across you know, tweets and trust pilot reviews, um, app store reviews, things like that. Yeah. So we gathered a lot of this organic feedback and kind of mapped that along our timeline just to get a sense around what was the experience we were giving our customers throughout the years. And what was really interesting was that whilst some of the content of those reviews changed because of different features or products or services, the kind of emotional core to them was more or less the same. A really big focus on this feeling of achievement, uh, kind of self-belief, and a lot of um, enjoyment as well that was coming through. Yeah. So we really wanted to build on that further, and that's where a test became a really instrumental part of the project for us. So consumer research at that level became for us about kind of um, a bit of soul searching. So we talked to our existing customer base, which was a really important part of the project, finding out about you know, why, had they had, why they had gotten started with us, how we had helped them thus far, you know, what was working, what wasn't. And then on the flip side, also talking to our external um, target audience as well. Uh, again, using a test to help us with this. And what was particularly powerful in that part of the project was really delving into the kind of drivers and inhibitors that were impacting our target audience. Yeah. And of course, you know, we brought in all kinds of research, but that was the most um, insightful and impactful in terms of building out this brand story. And again, finding a lot of um, similarities and commonality across what we had found in that kind of feedback gathering that we had done at the beginning. And ultimately, this kind of culminated in bringing all this research together, um, getting all the creative minds in the business together to think about you know, the next steps. And this is where we landed on this new brand promise. So we make a promise to our customers that we will help them turn their money into something greater. And we were really excited about this message, but of course we wanted to close the loop with more consumer insight. So we also put that out to, to our target audience, to our customer base, to get a sense around how they interpreted and how that resonated with them as well. So, sorry, long response, but essentially consumer insight was a huge part of, of the project end to end. Amazing. And I'm sure a question that 
those in the audience will be thinking, but what impact has the rebrand had on the business so far? What metrics were you looking at? Yeah, I think, again, like there's a lot of exciting impact that has come off of the back of the project, but I think the ones that really stand out and resonate to me are, you know, obviously there's only so much you can do in terms of, you know, measuring and tracking your brand strategy if you don't really have that codified and defined. So for us being in a position to know what it is that we wanted to set out to do and what brand perception we wanted to build and having the tools to measure that have been, you know, really empowering. So over the last year, we've seen a really positive increase in all of our chosen brand image associations. And so just being able to see that um, increase in positive uh, brand perception. And I think one other really positive one that stands out to me is, of course, this element around, you know, brand being much bigger than what you say um, on, on the outside. You know, you have to live and breathe uh, to have integrity as a brand, what you set out to do. So just seeing that, you know, this project has helped to bring brand a little bit more center stage across the business, mm -hmm. hearing lots more conversations, discussions about how we're thinking about brand and the customer experience um, through, the whole, through the whole journey. Yeah. And then what would your advice be to others looking to proceed with a rebrand? Mm. So I think uh, a few kind of big takeaways and pieces of advice I would share are, well, you know, talk to, talk to your target audience and your customers, <laughs> obviously. Um, so I think a big one there for me was really hone in on those drivers and inhibitors. I think, you know, the financial services industry in particular is replete with lots of inhibitors. There's a lot of um, products that cause a lot of angst and are kind of a bit intimidating. So again, really delving into that. And I would also add, keep talking to, to your customers and your consumers after a big brand project as well. Make sure that you're staying up to date around how, how you can bring them value. And then I'd also definitely add, you know, don't underestimate the power of talking to your existing customers as well. There's so much to be gleaned from them. If you've been doing things right, they're going to be your, they're going to be your, you know, your biggest advocates as well as your biggest critics as well. <laughs> So I think there's a lot that can, be, that can be learned from talking to them. And then I think a final one for me would be, you know, don't feel like you can't get started if you are kind of in you know, the startup stage or at this kind of similar inflection point in the scale up journey. I think there's a lot you can do to kind of glean consumer insight, yeah. get lots of research in a cost effective way. So obviously a test is a big part of that, you know, empowering you to bring research in house. But as I said, you know, we also utilize lots of different methods looking at you know, feedback and, and testimonials available to us or conducting qualitative interviews as well. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely achievable for any company. Yeah, yeah. Um, so finally, now that we've spoken about that rebrand and it's been so well received, so what's next on the cards for Moneybox? What can we expect over the next couple of years? Ooh, so yeah, big question. I mean, if the last you know, five, six years or anything to go off, you know, I think there's gonna be lots Lots going on and lots happening. I think more immediately in terms of the brand, obviously, you know, brand work is ever ongoing, ever evolving. I think we are quite excited to explore elements of our kind of visual identity in terms of um, how that responds to the recent brand work and the kind of positioning, messaging. And then on you know, a bigger scale, we've got a lot of exciting work in the pipeline around the proposition as well, continuing to bring you know, more services and products and benefits to our, to our customers to help them with their goals. So we'll definitely be exploring ways to support them uh, with brand as well. Oh, so really exciting. Yeah, lots of exciting stuff coming up. Amazing, all right then. Well, thank you so much, Hannah. I really appreciate that you taking the stage with us to share that story. Um, if we've got any questions, we're happy to take those now if we'd like to. Do we have any questions from the room? I've stunned everyone into silence. <laughs> uh, okay, so guys, if, you have, if there's no questions from the room, then we have a massive round of applause. Thanks, guys. Well done, Lucy, for stepping Thank in. You. Thank you. And if oh. you would like to chat with any of us, we'll be at table 57 on Wine Alley. It's the attest stand. Um, we'd be happy to chat. Hannah's going to join us for the next 30 minutes. So if um, there are any questions, we'll see you there. And uh, Sorry, what cool shit have you got on your stand? Pardon? What cool stuff have you got on your stand? What cool stuff? So we have a family fortunes game that's been created with attest data. So if you'd like to win a thousand pound gift card, thousand. head over there and play that competition. Right, everyone clears out and goes. <laughs> Try to win a grand, but uh, another round of applause. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you.